Welcome to Rocking with River 4, a series of short videos that will get you up and running quickly using the River 4 feed reader. I'm Andy Sylvester. In each of these videos, we'll look at some of the basic functions of River 4. Lesson 4 River 4 Amazon S3 Heroku Setup in the first three videos in this series, you'll learn how to install the River 4 feed reader locally on your Windows PC or laptop. This is a good way to learn how to get started in using River 4. However, one of the great features of River 4 is the ability to run the app on a service like Heroku and host the River 4 files on the Amazon S3 storage service. This video will show you how to run the River 4 app on Heroku, set up hosting on Amazon S3, and be able to access your river on the web anytime. The five parts to this tutorial video are Amazon S3 Setup, DNS Setup for Domain Name, GitHub Account Setup, River 4 Setup, and finally, Heroku setup and deploy of the River 4 app. Let's get started! To start the S3 setup process, you'll need to have an Amazon.com account. If you do not have an Amazon account, create one and add a credit card for billing. Next, go to aws.amazon.com and click on the Sign in on the Console window. You will then need to enter your current Amazon login information. After that, you will need to enter contact information, even though you may already have this information in your Amazon account. Fill out the information, click the checkbox there at the bottom of the screen, then click the button at the bottom of the screen to create your account. Next, fill out the payment information screen. Even though you can use the free tier for one year, Amazon requires you have a credit card on file. Next, fill out the identity verification screen. You'll enter a phone number, then Amazon will call you with a PIN to confirm your identity. Next, fill out the support plan screen. Choose the basic level of support radio button, then click the continue button. After a few seconds, you'll see the Activation Confirmation page. Click on the Launch Management Console button. You will again be prompted to enter your Amazon login information. After that, the Management Console will appear. Click on the S3 entry on the left side of the screen to access the S3 functions of Amazon Web Services. The first step is to create a new username with S3 access to support the use of River 4. Go up to the menu in the upper right corner with your name, Andrew Sylvester, in this video. Then select the Security Credentials menu item. A dialog window will appear. Click on the Get Started with IAM Users button. This will bring up the IAM Management Console. Click the button Create New Users. Next, enter a descriptive username in the top box. This does not have to match any Amazon username. Also make sure that the checkbox Generate an Access Key for Each User is checked. Click on the Create button at the bottom of the screen. You'll then see a message that the user has been created successfully. You can click on the Download Credentials button to download a CSV file with the AWS security credentials. You can also click on the Show User Security Credentials link to display the two AWS keys access key ID and secret access key. 
and copy them into a text file or word processor document to use later in the River 4 installation. After saving the keys, click the close link at the bottom of the screen. The user you just created will appear in the next screen. Click on the user, then scroll down to the Permissions section. Click on the Attach Policy button, then scroll down and find the policy Amazon S3 Full Access. Click the checkbox for the policy. Then click the Attach Policy button at the bottom of the screen. Now we will create a bucket for your files on the Amazon S3 storage service. Go to the upper left corner and click on the orange box. Then scroll down and click on the S3 entry to begin creating your bucket. Click on the Create Bucket button. A dialog box will appear. For the bucket name, choose the domain name you'll use for this bucket. We will use the domain name rivertest.andysylvester.com and select the region as U.S. Standard. Click the Create button. You should see the bucket name appear on the left side of the window. If it doesn't, refresh the Browser tab. Click on the bucket name and you should see a message saying that the bucket is empty. Next, click on the Properties button on the right side of the screen. Then click on the heading Static Website Hosting. Click the Enable Website Hosting button, then enter index.html for the index document. Click Save and then record the endpoint in your notes. It should be something like the one that you see here in the video. To complete the bucket setup, you need to add a bucket policy. To select the correct bucket policy, open a new browser tab to this URL then go to the Granting Read-Only Permission to an Anonymous User section. Copy the text in that section of the page. Then click back on your AWS Browser tab. Click on the heading Permissions, then Add Bucket Policy. A pop-up window will open. Paste the text that you copied earlier. Finally, edit the last line, changing the text Example Bucket and using your own domain name, in this example, rivertest.andysylvester.com. After making your update, click Save to save the bucket policy. The final step is to create a folder within the bucket called Lists. This folder will contain the OPML files with the feeds you want to follow. For this tutorial, download a set of example files created by Dave Weiner. You can get them as a zip file from this URL. The URL will also be in the notes for the video. Unzip the files after you download the zip file. Next, go back to your AWS Browser tab, then click on the Create Folder button in the upper left corner of the console. Enter the name Lists without quotes into the text box, then click on the check mark. Double click on the List folder you will see it has no files. Click on the Upload button. A dialog window appears. You can either drag and drop files on the area on the window, or you can click on the Add Files button. In this tutorial, we are using the Add Files button, then selecting the OPML files that were downloaded earlier. Click the Start Upload button to start transferring the files to the list folder. Other videos in this series will show you how to create new OPML files and edit existing files. Now that you have your Amazon S3 account and bucket set up, the next step is to configure the DNS for your website name. 
For this tutorial, it is assumed that you already own a domain name that you can use for this River 4 installation. In this example, the setup will be done on the hosting provider that the domain uses. You may be using other services where you can control your domain name, such as a domain name registrar. You will be creating a type of DNS record called a CNAME. This is an entry in a table that allows you to point a particular domain or subdomain name to a specified URI. In this example, you'll see how a record is added to point to the subdomain river test to the S3 endpoint saved earlier in this tutorial. On this hosting provider, the domain andysylvester.com has been selected. In the host record field, enter the desired record name. For this example, we'll enter river test. Then go to the drop down box on the type entry and select CNAME. In the points to paste the endpoint from your Amazon S3 setup, then click Add Record, and this completes the DNS setup. On this provider, you can now see that there is a CNAME entry called River Test. The River 4 software is hosted on GitHub, a site that hosts the source code for multiple software applications. As part of this tutorial, you will create a GitHub account and then use that account to get a copy of the River 4 software. To create a GitHub account, go to github.com. On the right side of the screen, you will see three text fields. Fill them out, then click on the Sign Up for GitHub button. A new page will appear where you need to select the GitHub plan you want. Select the free plan, then click the Finish Sign Up button. You will then see your GitHub home page. The next step is to make a copy of the River 4 source code. Type River 4 in the search box at the top of the screen, then press Enter. A list of repositories will be shown. Click on the Scripting River 4 entry. This will take you to the River 4 source code repository. Click on the Fork button in the upper right corner of the window. In a few seconds, a copy of the River 4 source code will be created in your own GitHub account. The final part of this tutorial is to create an account on the Heroku hosting service. Deploy the River 4 application, set up environment variables for your Amazon S3 setup, and watch the rivers of news start flowing. To get started, go to Heroku.com, click on the Sign Up for Free button. A sign up page will appear. Enter your first and last name along with an email address. Then click the Free Account button. A new page will appear, directing you to look at your email account. Open an email from Heroku, then click on the link in the email. A new page will open, asking you to enter a password for your Heroku account. Click the Set Password and Login button when you're done. Click on the link on the next page, and a dashboard page for your Heroku account will appear. In the upper right corner, you'll see a plus sign. Click on the plus sign to add a new Heroku app to your account. A page will appear asking for the name of the app. You can enter a name or let Heroku come up with a name. For this tutorial, we'll use the name My River. Enter that name in the box, then click the Create App button. Next, the Deploy page will appear. Click on the Connect to GitHub button. If you had already logged into GitHub, you'll see a screen 
asking you to authorize Heroku to open your GitHub account. Click on the Authorize Application button. Heroku will display your GitHub account name and search box to search for a repository. Enter River 4 in the text box, then click on the search button. You will then see the copy of River 4 in your GitHub account. Click on the Connect button. You will then see a list of options for deploying the River 4 application. Scroll down and click the Enable Automatic Deploys button so that updates to your application will be deployed without any other action. Next, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the Deploy Branch button. A build log will open and you will see various software packages being installed. After 15 to 20 seconds, you should see the message, your app has been successfully deployed. The next step in the deploy process is to set environment variables for your Amazon S3 account and other River 4 information. Go to the top of the page and click on the settings button. Next, click on the reveal config bears button. You will see a message that there are no config bars present. Click on the edit button. You will see two text fields appear marked as key and value. Enter the first key for your Amazon S3 setup, AWS Access Key ID. Then paste the value for this key from the security credentials you saved from your Amazon S3 setup. To add a new key and value, click on the plus sign at the end of the row. Here are the keys that you need to enter for your setup. AWS Access Key ID, AWS Secret Access Key, AWS Region, S3 Path, and Password. Use the letters upper and lowercase as shown on the screen. The first two keys come from the security credentials that you saved from your Amazon S3 setup. The next one, AWS underscore region, represents the region for your S3 bucket. There are a list of regions at this web page with the URL you see on the screen. If you selected the US standard bucket, the region is US East 1. The value of S3 path is the name of your bucket with a forward slash at each end. For this example, rivertest.andysylvester.com with a forward slash at the beginning and at the end. For the password, enter a password. You will use this in another video. Click the Save button when you have finished entering the environment variables. The River 4 app will redeploy after you click the Save button. After 5 to 10 minutes, the River 4 app should have created some initial files in your S3 bucket. Go back to the S3 console and click on the bucket name. You should see a file called index.html and two new folders called data and rivers. If these are present, the River 4 app is working. Once the app is deployed, it will take 15 to 30 minutes for the River 4 app to start reading feeds and displaying new feed items. Check your website URL, rivertest.andysylvester.com, for this tutorial in about a half an hour, and you should start to see some rivers displayed. You will see tabs where you can select the different feeds from the different OPML files on the website. This concludes this tutorial on setting up River 4 to run on the Heroku hosting service and serving files on the Amazon S3 storage service. 
For more videos on using River 4, go to andysylvester.com.